every business that we've built, everything that we've been involved in has been pretty quick. You know, within a couple of months, we're clicking off and making money. But you hear about those those businesses that are like, oh, we built for five years without making a dime and all of a sudden now it's a billion dollar company, you know? And so that's kind of the thing that I've been in the last two years where it's, you know, something that I've really tried to scale. Hi there. Welcome to the amazing Rafted Entrepreneur Show. I am joined today by none other than Chase Craft himself. Hello, hello. The one that gave me the craft last name. Yeah. Thank you. You would, this brand would not exist without my name. I always say. That's I why mean, you married me. You're still my joke, <laughs> still my joke. I know. I've heard you say it so many times. I already know. I know. I need new dad jokes. I know. Okay. So I wanted to have you on because. dad jokes though. I'm very witty. People are always like, oh, Kayla. Hmm. Are you saying I'm not funny? <laughs> I think I'm really funny. Okay. No comment. So I'm excited <laughs> to have, I'm excited to have you on because we have so many moving parts happening in the craft household. So let's do a personal life update really quick with what's going on. You're starting a new podcast yourself, which is fun with your buddies. Are we even going to like make reference to that? Cause I don't even, is that going to hurt my brand? I don't I have no idea. You know, yeah, exactly. You don't know what's <laughs> going to be coming out of you over there. I don't think it's going to hurt your brand. I don't even know if it's going to happen. You guys have bought point. all the stuff. I know that, it. but like, you know, it's like one of those things that like, it all sounds like a great idea until you like, because people, actually well, to come let's to show actually talk about that. People it. think podcasting is a hobby until they start one and they realize it's a actual business. Exactly. Like it's an actual business. And I've been telling them like, when you start a podcast, you got to commit to it. You've got to go all in because we don't do things halfway yeah. over here. I'd rather you not start if you're not going to freaking rock it. Okay. <laughs> because that's not cool. No, I'm, uh, no, I'm gonna, excited. I actually happen. want you guys to start the podcast because I could listen to you guys all the time. Yeah. It will be really good once we get it going. That's what a lot of wannabes say. I know. Right? And it would know. be really good. Oh, I would be a millionaire. I didn't say would. I said will. Oh, okay. So, all right. So personal life would. update, uh, our son just made the hockey team that he's been working really hard for. So yep. he gets to take a couple weeks off and I'm excited for him to have a little bit of a break, you know, just to like be a kid this summer. I'm excited to have a little bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that. Like, why is it important for us? Because you know, my mom always tells us, she's like, you guys are too busy. Like you guys never chill. And you're very much in the camp of, and I always am like, babe, let's like not do anything, you know, like let's chill. And he's like, no, I like our kids to be busy Yeah, because that's how you were raised. Right. Yeah. What was your childhood like? <laughs> I mean, I was always doing competitive sports from the time I was young. I was a competitive swimmer. We were at the pool literally every day and every weekend. How do you I think, think it, that helped you being an adult though? One, I think high level elite competitive sports is, is there's a lot of life lessons for just life in general, you know, learning how to work with people, you know, especially team sports, learning how to be on a team, learning respect for your elders, your coaches, learning how to have drive and, and self-motivation to, to be better. And then also as a kid, it, it keeps you out of things that you shouldn't be getting into. You know, like I think about, I think about the kids that were, you know, in high school, I, I, I could think about like the kids that weren't a good influence on my life. And most of them were not involved in any sort of sporting stuff because they okay. had too much idle time. Idle time is not good for, it's not good for us as adults. It's not good for children. Like, I think it's good to be busy because. Well, let's like, I think we should change the word busy because what we're really doing is we're just, pro we're productive. We are constantly doing things that challenge us and our kids. Like even tonight, yeah. we've got to run Charlie over to lacrosse and she doesn't really want to go because it's practice and it's not, it doesn't come easy to her. And we're like, no, you're going to at least finish out the season mm -hmm. and responsibility, gonna, commitment. Yeah. yeah. You're going to focus on doing your best yep. every single day. And what else are they going to do? Sit at home and play video games or watch movies? Uh, first or, of all, my kids don't play video I games. I know they don't, but I'm saying like, it would be much harder for us to keep them out of the desire to play 
games and all that kind of stuff if they weren't busy right. all the time doing sports. Right. Getting back into just the, the elite sports, but then also the price of elite sports. And you said something so cool the other day. You said some other parents were complaining because one of Cooper's coaches is going to do like a camp and it's going to cost like seven grand for the year. And he drives like a G wagon. Like this guy's like, he's doing well for himself. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was able to sell one of the hockey clubs he created and make a good little dime off of it. And we're like clapping for him. We're like, this is amazing. Yeah. But other people, they aren't so happy for him around it. Yeah. What, what was going on? Which is wild to me. It's like parents want coaches to be like starving artists. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I, I want my kids hockey coaches to be rich. That means that they're good at their job and, and, <laughs> exactly. I, and I enjoy paying them because I'm getting results, you know, and I'm getting a good product, which is my kids getting better at his craft. And I have no problem with the hockey coaches making a bag for it. You know what I mean? Like I encourage that, like I absolutely get rich off of it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're running a business too. Right. Like a hockey coach is, is whether, whether he has his own club or whether he's just an independent, you know, skills coach, it's a business. And, and I think that, you know, we encourage and we train people how to be successful business owners. And that means, you know, obviously some coaches take advantage of that. They can, people can take advantage of that, of like, you know, playing, having politics involved in, in, you know, Johnny getting playing time versus, you know, Timmy not getting playing time. But my thing is, is look, if, if, if Johnny and Timmy are the same, as far as like both of them are, are good players and they both compete at a high level, but Johnny is doing the extra work and he's, you know, going to that coach's, you know, extra trainings and all that stuff. And the coach, me as a coach, I'd be like, Johnny is working his butt off for it. And Timmy's just showing up and doing bare minimum. Absolutely. I'm going to play Johnny more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, now they if, see the effort. Now, if Timmy is obviously, if we're doing elite sports and you're paying a lot of money to be on elite teams in order to win, right? Like that's with our hockey playing AAA hockey, you know, going into it, if my son isn't performing well, it's we're there to win. So he might not get the playing time that you would want him to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. But I'm saying is like, if push push comes to shove and Timmy is that much better than Johnny is, then yeah, coaches are going to play the, the, his, their, their best hand to win games. But if they're apple, apples to apples comparison and I'm a coach, I'm playing the kid that's putting in the extra work. Really great points, babe. But I wanted to point out there just that mindset, you know, there's like, this, <laughs> yeah. there's the scarcity mindset, which is like, Oh, you know, this guy's making money off of my back. It's like, well, yeah, he's performing a service for you. He's coaching your kids. And then the abundant mindset is something like us. We're like, dude, that's amazing. Like if I'm selling my multi-million dollar home, I don't necessarily want my real estate agent that might be listing it to show up in a beat up car. Cause I'd go, Oh crap. Like, is she not good at what she does? Because it's almost, it's a representation yeah. of it. Yep. So it's with some, with some careers, we're okay with people making money. And with some careers, we want people to be poor. And that's just bull crap. Yeah. Just absolute bull crap. So yep. I love having you on because we can just go on all these crazy tangents, but (laughs) that one, that one got, well, people can relate to it though. Yeah, for sure. So personal life update, we have that going on with Coop. We have some other interesting things happening, which I want to bring up because real life happens as you build your business. Chase and I are both building, we're building separate businesses. And then we have one business that we're building together right now that we're both just extremely excited about, but we have a lot going on. Yes, we do have a lot of help. We have teams in place that help run all the things so we can keep good life rolling, right? But something that is a theme right now is, you know, Charlie's kind of struggling with like the mean girls situation. And Chase did something interesting the other day because I, and I think we should talk about it because this just happens in business. Like there could be drama in business mm-hmm. there. There's going to be drama where you want there to be drama. And if you entertain the drama, you just get more of it. And I actually got a, an interesting DM the other day and they're like, how do you deal with backstabbing or people who try to like undermine your leadership or whatever? Like, what do you do when there's drama? Basically, how do you respond to that? And Chase and I are not like averse to, to have no drama in our lives. Like there is some stuff that comes up And we have to learn how to not give it energy and not give it life. 
And we've said, your dad has said this since we got married. What has he said? What, no drama zone? <laughs> yeah. The Kraft family Zero is a no drama zone. Drama in our household or in, in my parents' household. <laughs> in the parents' household. Yeah. But then we got married and there was drama, like on our wedding week, it started. Well, that's because you were very used to. I was used to drama. There always being stuff happening. I know. Like but what I'm saying is in our family. Which there's pros and cons to both because in my family, sometimes there could be stuff that needed to be talked about that wasn't because it was a no, you know, like people didn't speak their mind in a way because it was a no drama zone. But it also was very helpful because it wasn't, it didn't foster the unneeded or unnecessary drama, mm -hmm. you know. So right now we're seeing it with Charlie and we don't want to, to make the drama worse, but we also want to teach her to talk about her feelings and talk about what's happening. And we do it in a very like open setting. We call Charlie out on when she's being drama, Yep. right? Because, and you call me out too. You're like, okay, little, it's little mini Kayla over here because I tend to go to that side of like being dramatic. But what I love about you is helping me bring it back to what, what is the main thing? Like, what is the main thing here? Like, what are you so upset about? Da, 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 da. And helping me just like work through those things. And it's important to have somebody in your life like that, that will keep you straight on the path. Because if you have those friends, like let's say something dramatic happened in your business or in your life, and you call up that friend, that's going to feed the drama, you know, and, and I have somebody like that in my life and you have somebody like that in your life too, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, if, if I want the drama to be fed, I'm going to call this person. Yeah. She'll just keep on giving it to me, right? She'll just make me matter. But Chase is that person in my life where he's like, okay, let's get it out. And then boom, let's move forward. And you do the same thing with Charlie, which mm -hmm. is really cool because mm -hmm. you have to teach our kids how to be around that. The mean girl situation doesn't go away when you become an adult. Yeah. I had suspicion that there was always two sides to a story, there is. right? Yes. There's always two sides to a story. And I had suspicion that there was maybe a little bit more exaggeration to one side of a story than there should have been. And so with Charlie, it was like, okay, I can nip this in the butt now and shut that exaggeration of the drama down. Because I think, you know, there's, there's you, you know, our kids, our kids, sometimes exaggerate some of that stuff because they want some more attention from us or whatever that is. And we need to teach them that like, hey, you, you need to present the facts. And sometimes, you know, if you're at fault in, in, in any way, then you need to own up to that and you need to be responsible for your own actions and exaggerating drama so that you are somehow a victim is not okay. Right. And one of the things you did was you're like, okay, we'll get this girl's family and us all in a room and we're just going to talk about it. And then yep. all of a sudden her story started to change. Whoa, 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 wait. And, but you've done that with employees yep. on our staff before too. You're yep. like, oh, okay. You're, you want to get this resolved real quick. We're just going to get on a zoom call real quick and we're going to talk about it. And yep. then stories started to change. Yeah. So we like to, instead of like saying and calling it drama, it's just, no, let's get right to it. Let's face the, whatever issue is in front of us. And let's have open communication around it so we can squash it. So there is no drama. I think what happens with some leaders is they just say, Hey, don't bring that to work. Leave it at home. If that person mm -hmm. bothers you, whatever, like, I don't want to hear about it, but then it just continues to fester and it just builds the annoyance builds, builds and builds. And then they start to have it out for yeah. each other instead of having that teamwork. And so we, the team knows like, Hey, if you're going to bring us something, we're going to have a family meeting over it. Yep. Yep it happens with our kids. It happens with employees when there's jealousy or they feel threatened or, you know, they feel underappreciated or underseen, then they're going to start, you know, creating unnecessary drama to either make the, that other person or employee feel bad or look bad, right. To, to their employer, you know, if they obviously feel threatened or, or jealous of that person, they're going to try and, you know, shine a, a negative light on them to make themselves look good. And so, you know, I, I learned that from my dad, working with my dad when I was, a, you know, I started working for my dad when I was 18 years old and became in a management position by the time I was 20. And so, you know, I learned a lot of employee management from him. And that was one thing that he would always do. Like if we had, if we had an employee that came to us with some sort of, 
you know, drama or complaint about another employee or he said, she said, did this or whatever. My dad would be like, cool. All right. We're going to call this person in. We're going to call that person in. We're going to all go into the conference room and we're going to chat about this. (laughs) And literally nine times out of 10, 10, the uh, employee that brought the drama would go, Oh, you know what? Maybe the, maybe he didn't do that. Or maybe he didn't say that. Or maybe I interpreted it differently than Mm -hmm. it within what I should have. And it's like, ah, okay. So you were just kind of, you know, creating some unnecessary drama or making stuff up. Literally people would make stuff up like that just to, you know, you know, have us, you know, look at, look at an an employee in in a different light, but literally fixes. And, And then when there's real issues, those employees or your, or your children are like, yeah, I do want to, I do want to get in a room and talk about this because it's really affecting my work. It's really affecting my, you know, my workplace, um, you know, environment, whatever the culture of the company. Like, yes, I do want to get into a room and address this issue because it needs to be addressed, you know? Yeah. It's not always drama. So then, you know, yeah. Then, you know, when, when that, when that employee is going, yep, I want to meet, then, you know, okay, this is a real issue that I need to, then I need to spend, spend time on. So that's what we did with Charlie. It was like, she came home the other day with, you know, this massive drama. And I had suspicion from another incident that I was like, Charlie might be, you know, playing her hand a little bit with us here. Right? Well, I think it's good to bring this up because even with our kids, obviously we really have rose colored glasses mm-hmm. a lot, a yep. lot of the time, but we can have rose colored glasses with, with people that are influences are in our life, like friends or certain family members where we just think they can't do anything wrong. Right. Like we just think the world of them. And it's not always good to have those rose colored glasses on because nobody is perfect. So people are going to make mistakes. And I think it's important to understand that people, you know what I mean? Like don't always expect, is that a bad thing to say actually? Right. That like people aren't always perfect. So if somebody's coming to you with information, like, okay, I'm going to take this example of our driver. Well, he's not our driver anymore because he pissed me off too many times, but like from the get go, you didn't like this guy. You Mm -hmm. were like, I do not like that guy. And I was like, why? Like he always brings me Starbucks. He's driving me around. Like I like his car. It's clean. And you're like, he drives too fast. Like you just did not like him at all, but I had rose colored glasses on because the guy brought me Starbucks every time he picked me up to drive me around. And and he would like randomly text you and ask you how you're doing and stuff. And I'm like, that's a little bit inappropriate. But I I know, but I didn't even respond back to him. He was doing that to other people I had referred him to too. Like he did that to all the girls, Yeah. which now looking back, I'm like, he's a freaking creep. Yeah. But like I had rose colored glasses on. Like that's just one example of how I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to feed the negative things you're saying. But sometimes like And then I ended up getting screwed over by this guy out of money. Right. So I think sometimes we have to like, listen to those wise people in our lives. Not sometimes we should always listen to those wise people in our lives that we trust when they're pointing out something like, yeah, that person's something's off about them. Take your rose colored glasses off and just say, Hmm, like maybe they have a point to it. That just happened with like a betrayal that happened with somebody that I thought was a friend of mine and Kimmy and one of my other good friends, Jen, had always said, like, I don't like that girl. Like, there's something about her. I do not like her. I do not trust her. you like, at all. You need to be careful with her. And I'm like, no. Da, da, da. Like, I just couldn't see it. And then now that I have my rose colored glasses on, because she did something that was like, for me, there's no coming back from. We'll never be friends again. And then I'm like, oh, now I see all the red flags. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. So we have to have those people in our lives that really, truly love us, that have nothing to gain from us financially, like nothing to gain from that friendship being a bad thing. Or, you know what I mean? Like you had nothing to gain maybe from me knowing the driver was, yeah, I mean, maybe to save a little money. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we went on a whole nother tangent there, but take your rose colored glasses off basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> Make sure to be on the lookout for people. Okay. So you are busy in your, I, okay. I need to stop saying that word busy. It's annoying. I don't like saying that word because you've been productive. Yeah. You've been making deals happen. I have loved watching you just step into this like powerhouse that you've always been. I've always seen you as that person, but now, I mean, like your dreams are really coming to true right mm-hmm. now. Like yeah. the things you've been working on for years and nobody has seen, you've been doing it behind the scenes. And now it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's happening. It's like that movie happening everybody you know get ready oh my gosh santa's here 
I feel like it's that <laughs> moment. <laughs> For you. I, feel like, see, I, am feel, funny. I feel like that was maybe three different movies that you all okay, matched together. But there. see, that's why I'm funny. Okay. Comment if you think I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> or people who are actually funny don't have to try to convince <laughs> exactly. people that they're funny. Okay. Exactly. I get it. I laugh at my own jokes, which is what matters. Yeah. It's what matters. So anyways, it's this time for you and I'm really proud of you. What do you feel like you've been doing behind the scenes that is finally like making everything come to fruition? Like your hard work's finally paying off. I think just consistency is the biggest thing. Like, you know, you hear about stories of, of entrepreneurs, you know, we've been, we've been pretty fortunate in the fact that like, you know, we haven't had a, we haven't necessarily built a business or had an issue not an issue. It's not an issue making money, but it's a, it's more of a, everything that we built up to this point has been like pretty quick results, right? Right. Every business that we built, every thing that we've been involved in has been pretty quick, you know, within a couple of months we're clicking off and making money. But you hear about those, those businesses that are like, oh, we built for five years without making a dime. And all of a sudden now it's a billion dollar company, you know, or 10 years or whatever. Like, you know, the one that comes to mind is like Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy. Like he, he spent like 12 years building Barstool Sports before it even like was made, made any sort of money. And now it's a billion dollar company. Right. And so that's kind of the thing that I've been in the last two years of like, okay. You've really I'm been doing really... it for three years. It was before the pandemic. It you, was, were, you started it. I started it. Yeah. It's really been two years from the time that I decided to like, okay, I want to, I'm going to make a business out of this. Like initially it was kind of more of a, you know, something to kind of help with mommy millionaire. So really the last two years where it's, you know, something that I've really tried to, tried to scale, but you know, I've been in that mode of like, I feel like I'm just so busy every day and, and being productive and building this thing. And, you know, it's just taking time and, you know, I have those days where I'm like, gosh, am I, what am I doing? I'm just spinning my wheels. You know, this isn't never going to take off all of these things. And it's just really just staying consistent, you know, and the consistency that's, that's gotten me to the point where I'm, where I am now, um, where we're actually like, you know, getting ready to, to really start to, to make a lot of money with it. And, and we're growing and scaling and we're bringing on some massive partners that I had, you know, no idea that I would even be at the place where I'm at, you know, bringing on these type of, uh, of, of partnerships and, and just the consistency also brings when you're consistent, it brings about opportunities that you wouldn't see that coming, you know, mm-hmm. like you, you couldn't plan for the opportunity. No, you have now. no. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when you're showing up and, and, you know, you're being intentional about, you know, your time and networking and all those things, all of a sudden opportunities open up for you that you had no intention of, of ever coming to fruition. So, you know, some, some stuff has just been in, in alignment where talking with about a partnership with a company and then randomly having dinner with a guy that who's, who's on the board and an investor in that company. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to get this deal done for you. Like it's done deal. Like those types of things where it's, you know, you start to see those wins and it's like, okay, now I'm, now I'm excited. I know why these people, you know, have said that built billion dollar companies that have said, just stay, stay consistent and stay on the track, you know, even though that it might seem slow. And, and even though you had, a, I mean, just like I was telling you, I'm like, I think it's just time to throw in the towel, babe. Yeah. because I have that. That's my go-to mindset. I'm like, okay, if I'm not making money, cause everything I've done has always just made money quickly, mm-hmm. but also not, I've never built a company to scale and exit. And yeah. that's really what you're, you know, you're doing here. So yeah. it's like, I, I can't really speak to that. <laughs> I'm like, well, why aren't we making money anyway? And you've not listened to me, which I think is smart because, you know, and I, I think the times I've been successful, you're really like, why are you doing this? I didn't listen either. And it's because sometimes your spouse isn't going to get the vision. I'm not your business partner in that business. So I don't necessarily see the vision. I'd see it now. Like, yeah, I'm like excited now that yeah. I, <laughs> that it's all shiny and pretty. Yeah. But I didn't like it because it was inconvenient for me, you know, yeah. for a little bit. And I love that you just didn't listen to me. You're like, no, I see the vision. And that's what, in order to be successful in any business, you've got to be committed to the vision. You, you have to be committed no matter what. Like people around you think you're crazy and you have to continue to see it without other people mm-hmm. seeing it. And even in, and it's, in, you know, it's the way it is with any entrepreneurship is, you know, when you don't see those wins and then you're getting rejected and you're like, Oh my gosh, do I have a product that people want? Or, you know, am I just talking to the wrong people? Or, you know, obviously it's a, 
it's a numbers game when you're dealing with, you know, building a company like this of like, you know, having that rejection and still being able to have to show up and, you know, maybe that rejection is good because it teaches you something about your product or, or your, you know, you know, your business. Well, yeah, your reject, the rejection you had, it, it taught you. I, if from my understanding is like, you're not for everybody. Like yeah. You're not going to be able to win the entire. And there, space. and there's, and there's, there's things where we learned like, okay, you know, after the 10th rejection for the same thing, maybe we need to look, look at something and position our mm -hmm. position, our offer different, or, you know, maybe that really is a, a, um, you know, a barrier of entry for people, um, stuff like that, where, you know, you just take that feedback and, and take those rejections as, as ways to learn and improve you know, so that you either get better at the sales process or you adjust your product offering or, you know, you're constantly just tweaking. And, and, and I think it's the same way with, with, you know, with mommy millionaire or, or, or crafted entrepreneur is like, you know, we do funnels or we do launches is like, you know, when stuff doesn't go quite right, it's not like, oh my gosh, we have crap product or something like that. It's like, no, we just need to make tweaks here, tweaks there. And constantly just, if you're not constantly receiving feedback and making tweaks in your business and tweaks in your offer and tweaks in your messaging and all that stuff, then you're not really trying to grow and scale your company. You know, like, I think that that's, that's constant. Like every brand, every big company, every major brand is constantly gaining feedback and making little tweaks to the way that they, you know, market the way that they run their team, their quality control and their products and all those things. I think that's, you know, you never have, there, there is no such business as just to set it and forget it. You know, I, I love that you're pointing this out because there's a lot of wannabe entrepreneurs out there. And I think for a long time, I fell into the category of wannabe, even though I was making money. But anytime I got feedback about anything, I would get pissed. I was like extremely defensive because I just thought my stuff was amazing. And I wasn't willing to like see the feedback as, oh, wait, this can actually help more of my customers yes. be more successful. Other it's hard I'm, not to. I'm taking it personal. It's like, it's like somebody telling your baby is ugly. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard not to get yeah. defensive, but you know, as you grow as an entrepreneur, you take that feedback and you go, okay, is there areas where I can improve and grow? Mm -hmm. You know? So I got some interesting feedback on one of my reels today. I haven't told you this, but some guy was like coming at me, like, cause I was talking about the 1% rule in investing and listen, like it's a small, literally 15 second clip from a podcast I was on. And they were, they had never invested in real estate before. And I said, oh, here's the good rule to live by, you know, when you're getting started, because you can get really stuck looking at deals and deals all the time, you know, and if, especially if you're not good at numbers yet, just follow the 1% rule. If it, if the rent on that property doesn't make at least 1% of the purchase price, just pass on it in the beginning. And this guy was like coming at me, like saying like rude stuff. And I commented back to him because I was like, there's caveats with everything. You're judging what I said based on a 15 second clip. And if you have something better to say, why don't you come in the comments and share it with people? Cause what I'm saying is to brand new investors and you know, yeah. and he wrote back and he was like, I'm not going to say anything on your platform. It's not a worthy enough platform for me to say anything on <laughs> kick rocks. And this is what I did. So I just finally blocked him. People who take the time to ever leave negative comments are like beyond me anyway, but that kind of stuff used to like really get me. And now I just block because I'm like, you know what? Like if you're not going to add value to my audience, then go, go yeah. away. You're not going to yeah. add value to anybody's life here. But I was in all honestly responding back to him and, and wanting to hear, oh, okay, well, what do you do then? If you're a Mr. Developer, tell me what your rules are that you follow. Like yeah. I was honestly open to hearing other people's things because I've grown and evolved. And I know I'm not like, I am not the smartest person in the room, especially when it comes to real estate investing. I just like teaching people what's worked for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've always been very open and honest about that. Like I'm not the best expert and I'm also not necessarily, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I just like teaching what I know what's worked for us. Yeah. And I like telling you because you do. Well, and everybody has a different way of doing stuff, right. you know, like no matter what it is, whether it's real estate, whether it's, you know, entrepreneurship, coaching, building a business, yeah. coaching, sports, like everybody has a different method and not one way is a, you know, fits one all. size fits all for everybody. And mm -hmm. so if you think that your way is the only way and it's your way at the highway, then you're, you're sorely mistaken because there's, you can learn from everybody. 
I think that's kind of a miserable life too. Yeah. When you're like not open yeah. to like learning. And he was yep. like this really old person. And I like to, I love to learn from older people like that have been doing it for 30 years 100%. longer. I'm like, tell me, like, I want to glean that wisdom from you. Right. But when people are like, mm, you're just an idiot and bye, bye. Yeah. Like, okay, now I want to like literally blow you up. Like <laughs> I'm going to be way better than you. Yeah. So I like getting a little, you know, gasoline a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. I do, but I do well. I know with, you do. Chips on my shoulder. I know you do. I know. I need to find a healthier <laughs> motivator. Find what works for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cooper has the same thing. Yeah. He gets that chip on his shoulder, and he's blasting kids yeah. on the ring, on the ice. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, I'm going on a rambling tangent here. I'm staring at you. It's just like <laughs> I get lost into his dark brown eyes. <laughs> oh, they're that mesmerizing. Yeah. They're really small. <laughs> Dude. I love you. Oh You're so cute. Anyway, do we want to say anything else? I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the most awkward podcast ending ever. <laughs> I love you. Oh, no, I love talking about all the things because it helps people just think about things. What's one yeah. thing we want to leave all the crafted entrepreneurs with? Something to think about, something to challenge them. I mean, I think that I think the biggest thing for me, it, it, like I said, is just staying consistent to your vision and your dream. No matter what, you know, you have that you were given that vision and that dream and and that. You need to you need to stay consistent to see it play out. Mm -hmm. Persist until I yeah. love that. I love that advice. And, you know. One thing I want to challenge everybody with is as you're on your road, you know, your journey of whatever your business is, your path of entrepreneurship, it's if you stay focused on being the best, like honestly, if you stay focused on being the best version of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, being the best CEO that you can be, being the best coach you can be, being the best in whatever industry, whatever field you're in. I think that's a good, like, it's a good thing that can motivate you every single day, right? Yeah. It's just like, okay, how can I be better than I was yesterday? If you see people that inspire you that are in your field, in your industry, what is it that inspires me about them? Oh, it's their confidence. It's the way they speak. Mm -hmm. It's the way they do this. Okay. I want to focus on my communication skills. I'm going to start investing in myself, getting a coach. So that way you can be the best. Yep. And if you're focused on that, you get better every single day. You're staying consistent with the actions it takes to make that business actually be successful. Eventually you get what you want yeah. in your life. I learned that from you when you started in network marketing, like there was nobody that was doing more in a day than you were. And you were being so consistent about it. And even through all the rejection and everything, like I was like, I, I felt awkward for you, <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is like painful too to much and painful to watch. Like I, I was, I, Again, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't where I am at, am at now and in, in, in my journey of entrepreneurship and, you know, that whole thing, but it worked, you know, <laughs> like whatever it was, it worked and the consistency and the, you know, constant rejection and everything else is like, you were the one that came out on top and you were laughing all the way to the bank, God. you know, yeah. like literally <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank of all the people that, you know said she's nuts and she's crazy and all this stuff you know they're still where they're at where they were at 12 years ago i know but you know what's crazy about me is i i have just so much like sympathy for those people like i still want to see those people win for the sure ones that make fun for sure and i always think that's interesting that i like want to keep going back and picking them back up yeah even though they were they were one of the ones that you know were trying to keep me down yeah I think yeah. that's just my faith in me. I always want to keep, I have, I, you know, I just have faith in the Lord, which makes me have faith in people. Cause I know like, you know, there's something good inside of everybody. Yeah. I want to help them get to where they want to go yep. still anyway, but it can also be my demise, too. but that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> So anyway, thank you so much for listening into Crafted Entrepreneur. It's this, this is like what we like to call the crafting and chaos because we're all over the place. We're talking about all the things, but at the end of the day, we know our conversations. We just have super high level conversations all the time. This is, this is our life. This is how we do our life. We could talk about 10 different subjects in a matter of an hour. 
And I just love doing life with you. I love being at this place that we're in right now where it's just like we're having fun with each other. We're we're seeing each other shine. I feel like you're you're like in your prime right now. Like you're like really rocking it. I mean, is that I'm not meaning your sexual prime, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean? I like seeing this and like you're I'm 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 getting like a space. Even though I have like a lot of things going on, I feel like I can just, I don't know. It's a, it's a different energy that we have because you're just really excited about what you have going on. And so it's yeah. fun to be able to be in this energy and not, I don't know. Am I making sense what I'm saying? Yeah. I just love watching you rock it. And it makes me just so proud to be your wife. And, you. and you're still just rocking as a dad and as a friend, like you're the guy that like you could do all these things. That's why I want to keep having you on the podcast because you're, you're such a good friend to people. You're, you're such a good dad. You're a good son. Like you I don't know how you do it all. You know, you really do. You do it all. I think you're going to have to write a book. Kate's craft. No, I don't, I don't know what the keys are to that. It just, <laughs> it just, it just happens. Human. Well, <laughs> I guess. Just, I don't know. Being a good human. Yeah. Okay. Well tune into things from Chase craft. If you want to learn how to be a good human. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening in and we'll, we'll have chase. We'll have craft. We'll have crafty back on the podcast to talk about his downfall and what we can do to help him out. All right. Bye everybody. Go.